and it is possible to transform your marriage into the dream you cherished when you first pledged to build your lives together. So what are we having? Take a look. Okay. You found it? Yeah. You are unbelievable. For these tools are the keys to a happy, stable marriage. People will give you a lot of advice on how to have a happy marriage or how to try and save one that's failing. The online marriage course offers actual tools that you can apply to improve any close relationship. Go to Scientology.org slash tools. No fee or donation is required. Most parents will tell you no one ever taught them how to raise a child. Next the secret to bringing up happy, productive children. Luca, come here, come here. Luca! We all want our children to grow up to become happy, healthy, and successful adults. But unfortunately, Kids don't come with an instruction manual. Luca! Come here, Luca. Luca! So most of us just stumble through. Come here. Armed with nothing more than our good intentions and our hopes that it'll turn out okay. Luca, come here. But trial and error is not the best way to raise a child. When are you gonna start studying, girl? I get to have a social life if I want to. And the constant friction all too often leads to revenge or revolt. So how can we ensure that our sons and daughters will become confident, contributing members of society? How do we bring them up to be the best they can be? In other words, how do we train them without breaking them? Don't wrinkle the suit. Well, perhaps that's the problem. Children are not dogs. They can't be trained like dogs are trained. They aren't controllable items. Try to train, control, or own your child, and you'll lose their love forever. A child is not a special species of animal distinct from man. A child is a man or a woman who has simply not reached their full growth yet. So any law which applies to the behavior of men and women also applies to children. There you are. For example, you to wait in the car. How would you like to be treated in the same manner a child is typically treated? What if you were constantly contradicted and ordered about? Mother, what do you think of this one? Oh, they're both hideous. Give me that. Here, try this on. And please do something with your hair. You can't leave it hanging straggly like that. And restrain from doing whatever you wanted to do. Name. Susan Whitney. You're not on the list. Step to the side, please. If you were treated with the same level of disrespect the average child receives, you'd resent it. In fact, you'd probably revolt. Well, it's no different for a child, except he's too small to strike back. So, he gets revenge instead. He'll damage his possessions on purpose. Or pester you. Mom, I'm gonna be late for the game! Accidentally spill things and generally destroy the peace of the home. This revenge is standard child behavior because he's fighting for his own self-determinism, his right to make his own decisions about himself. To get a better idea of this, the next time a child sits on your lap, notice how he'll sit there quite happily. Then put your arms around him as if he's being made to sit there. What will happen? Instantly, he'll squirm. He'll fight to get away, get angry, cry. Yet he was happy to sit there on his own before you started holding him. That's what happens when you interrupt someone's self-determinism. Your efforts to mold, train, or own your child react on her exactly the same way. The sweetness and love of a child is preserved only as long as she can exert her own self-determinism. A child has a right to his self-determinism, his own power of choice. For example, if you take a child and make him play a musical instrument, 
his ability to play that instrument will not improve. You have to consult the child's willingness. He would at least have to agree with the fact that it's a good thing to play an instrument. Find out what his own ambitions actually are. Maybe he doesn't even want to play the violin. Find something he is interested in and allow him to do that. I got you, son. If you don't interrupt his willingness to do it, neither will he. Sophocles! <laughs> no way! That's awesome, Mom! Now, of course, this doesn't mean we have to let kids run wild. Children need a certain amount of control. And they look to their parents for direction. If they don't get that direction, Finish your homework? they'll think you don't care about them. No. The key to getting your child to do things without using force is communication. Again, consult their willingness. Are you hungry? Yeah. Okay, can I buy your helmet to make dinner now? If you can get your child's willingness on something, they will happily do it. You see, children instinctively want to contribute to their parents because they know their parents do more to take care of them than they can do back. Can I help you bake cookies? Yes! Children are quite willing to work. A young child will haunt her mother trying to help out. Permit her to do so, and she'll get the idea that her presence and activity is desired. You're really good at this. But the child who is not encouraged or permitted to help becomes convinced that her contribution is not wanted. And later on, she'll have definite difficulties regarding work and will actually get quite apathetic about it. Close the refrigerator door, please! If a teen is prevented from working, they begin to feel excluded from society. Not being a part of society, they begin to rebel against it. Therefore, as soon as a child is old enough to understand, it should be explained to them how the family operates, where the food and clothes come from, and so on. And they should be encouraged to help out. I would like a cabbage, please. Which one do you want? This one. Oh, that's a nice one. Good choice. Mom will like it. Let the child figure out for herself what her contribution can be. Thanks, girls. And then let her give it. A person feels able and competent only so long as she is permitted to contribute as much or more than others are contributing to her. Scientology contains a great many tools that will help any parent raise their child to become a self-determined, happy, contributing member of their family. There are even techniques you can learn to help your child recover more rapidly from their bumps and bruises as well as from the fears and upsets that are so often a part of growing up. Raising children can be one of the most rewarding life experiences of all. With these tools, you'll know precisely how to bring them up to become productive, responsible adults, while giving them the freedom and love they need to participate successfully in the game called life. The online children course contains much more about how to raise happy and self-confident children. The course includes practical exercises to help you apply these tools in your life. Start the online course by going to Scientology.org tools. There is no fee or requested donation. Coming up, the technology that can put you in control of your job and your career. Most of us, at one time or another, feel confused or upset about work. Watch the lights! Come on! Get it together! Perhaps the pace of our job and the problem of handling people leave us feeling stressed or overwhelmed. Yes, I'm on the other line with him right now. Okay. John. John. Or we push and drive ourselves to the point of exhaustion. 
when even the mere thought of continuing seems more than we can tolerate. New figures show the unemployment rate continues to rise. The number of people... We worry about holding on to the job we have. Come on, we don't want to be late for our first day of school. Or whether we can really succeed when we start a new one. At 10.30, this place is going to be swarming with people. I mean, just packed. We have to maintain crowd control that is paramount. We're going to have a special VIP guest coming in. We will not know the time of arrival. Keep in radio contact always. Look alive, be alert, and be nice to the press. Come outside, I'll show you the rest of the detail. I'd like your attention. Please gather around. Moreover, we see other people advance up the ladder for all the wrong reasons. Jenny will be styling our next mag cover. <laughs> It's her niece. Or watch luck triumph over hard work time and again. It's no wonder that most of us worry about our ability to build a successful career and achieve stability. But work is the major role of our existence, whether we like it or not. If we don't like it, we don't like life. So how can we re-energize ourselves? and regain our enthusiasm for work, overcome our insecurities, and feel confident and certain about our future. Well, in Scientology, it was discovered, in truth, all difficulties and failures stem from confusions. When you're confused about something, you're uncertain. In any aspect of our lives, it is our ability to handle confusion that determines our certainty, security, and success. So, what exactly is confusion? Well, confusion is random motion. Random means without any order or pattern to it. You see, confusions are made up of data, or factors, or parts. They have pieces. As long as all the parts or the pieces of it are in motion, you have confusion. But if you can single out just one piece of the confusion and halt that, then you'll have begun to bring order to that confusion. For example, a dispatcher with a dozen calls coming in all at once only needs to single out one call as the first call to take. That call becomes a stable datum. Hello, thanks for calling. How may I direct your call today? He can orient all the other calls on the switchboard to that first one, and he'll feel less confused. Thanks for calling. How may I help you today? It doesn't even matter which call he selected first. Once he picked one to be his stable datum, the other calls fell in line. Hello, thanks for holding. How may I help you today? Let's take an example of a biologist who is lost in the woods. He's confused. He's anxious. Well, a confusion is only a confusion so long as no part of it is understood. So if he simply grasps one fact about the situation... Okay, the sun always sets in the west. That fact becomes his stable datum. Which would make that east and that south. And he can then see how everything else aligns to that. Which will eventually take me back. Grasping one fact first, one stable datum, will handle his confusion and help him regain his certainty. The teacher, confronted with a number of immediate problems, only needs to pick his first target of attention to start bringing about order again. Now, have you ever tried to teach someone something? Now we have to maintain crowd control that is paramount. We're going to have a special VIP guest coming in. We will not know the time of arrival. Keep in radio contact always. Look alive, be alert, and be nice to the press. You know what to do. Only to discover later that the person made a mess of it. You may have just written it off to, well, he's just not that bright. But the truth of the matter is, he was just confused. He lacked a stable datum. One fact had to be brought home to him first. This list is the most important thing. If they're not on the list, they're not getting in. I don't care what they tell you. You got it? Got it. You handle it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, listen, if you're on this list, you're getting in. One is stupid and uncertain in any confusing situation until he has fully grasped one fact or one item. 
I'm sorry, Big Ken. I don't see you on the list. My boyfriend is the DJ. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry, if not on the list, you're not gonna. Sorry? It's Wilkins, reporter for the Globe. Grasping now one fact, he can now relate other things to what he has learned. Mr. Wilkins, you're all set, sir. Thank you. Oh, oh, wow. oh, come on. And thus go on to master the confusion in its entirety. Everybody has to come around this way. Now, you may have noticed that to handle any confusing situation, you have to be willing and able to exert some control. But did you know that there are such things as good control? I am your new teacher. My name is Mr. Lane. And bad control? Watch the lights. Come on. In Scientology, you'll learn what the precise difference is between the two and how you can improve your ability to control the people and things you work with. Hey, direct your call today. There are many other Scientology tools you can use to significantly improve your chances for success. For example, you're gonna learn what specific steps you can take to overcome exhaustion and recover your energy and enthusiasm for your work. You'll also discover exactly why you get tired from handling people all day long and what you can do about it. And you'll find out how to increase your familiarity and certainty with your tools so you can be in better control of your endeavors. Moving a lot better now. Very good. You can have confidence in yourself and certainty about your future. Superstar. We did it, man. You can have security. Good. That's good. People, I have an announcement to make. You can succeed. Today, Elizabeth will be styling our mag cover. With these tools, you can create exactly the career and the life you've always hoped for. Learn more about confusion, control, and exhaustion. Enroll in the Tools for the Workplace online course. There is no fee or requested donation. To begin Tools for the Workplace, go to Scientology.org tools. Next on Scientology Tools for Life, learn how you can organize any activity for success. You gotta take a look at these. If you've ever had to deal with a badly organized business or office, you'll know how trying and frustrating that experience can be. We're getting to the bottom of this. Even if it takes all night. The result of poor organization is confusion. I thought you were going to do it. No, that's part of your own job. Why would I be With doing too that? much work. My job. And very little getting done. I just want you to do your own job. Lacking the know-how to organize properly, the person in charge often tries to do everything herself. Honey, have you seen my keys? Uh, there's someplace, sweetheart. Mom, yeah, I'm gonna be late for the game. Could you uh, pack me a snack? Not yet, sweetheart. I'll be Regardless right of how capable yeah. she is, she ends up becoming overwhelmed, while those who could be put to work have nothing to do. On the table, honey, they're on the table. Uh, what was the street name again? Honey, I can't find they're them. They're on the table someplace. Honey. Close the refrigerator door, please. Mom, I'm gonna be late for the game. Honey, we'll be there, I just, ah. And trying to get a new business started without proper organization leads to a lot of extra effort and lowers your morale. But chaos and confusion are not natural conditions of life. How can we best organize ourselves and our lives? How do we manage our time, our activities, and those around us more effectively? How can we avoid distractions and overwork and help assure our success? Well, whether you're in charge of one project or an entire company, a busy family, or simply your own career, Understanding the basics of organizing is the key factor in achieving your goals. We all recognize that if things were better organized, we'd get more accomplished. Hey, man. I've been here for 20 minutes. What's the problem? I'm just looking for your receipt. My employees Sir, get this shirt. That is not my shirt. This one doesn't have a tag. I can't Come tell. on, it's back there. It's got to be back there. This happens sometimes. It's going But most of us lack an understanding of the natural laws of organization. Sir, is this your shirt right here? That's not my shirt. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. Move, move. That's not my shirt either. We're gonna find this eventually, okay? You need some help. You see, any activity is made up of a series of actions that take place in a certain sequence. Here's a simple example. 
This woman is a jewelry maker. Now, her first step in making a necklace should be to organize her beads. If she sorts her beads according to their color, she would find them much easier to work with. Once her materials are organized, she would string the beads into necklaces. But those finished necklaces aren't worth anything until they're sold, so her next step would be to package them. And finally, to take them to a local boutique and sell them to the store owner. I have everything you ordered. Perfect. Your necklaces are so popular. Here you go. Thank you so much. If we were to make a simple chart of the sequence of her actions, it might look like this. Sorting, stringing, packaging, then selling. And in this example, the jewelry maker is the person in charge of all of the different actions, since she's the only employee in her company. As we've seen, this woman's product is jewelry. By product, we mean something that is completed, that can be exchanged for another valuable, such as money. A product can be the thing that you're selling, or it could be a service you provide. L200, how may I assist you? A product can be exchanged with people outside of your organization. There you go, bye. Or it could be something you've completed that you put in the hands of someone within your organization. I finished pricing out that project, so you can start ordering the materials. Great, thanks. Every position in an organization has a product. And all of the products from all of those positions should add up to a final product that can be exchanged. Therefore, your first step in organizing anything is to determine what your final product will be. Once you know what your final product is, you simply have to work backwards in sequence to establish the earlier products, which all in a row add up to the final product. For example, what does it take to create this cupcake? Well, to begin, someone has to make sure the bakery has enough sugar and flour. Flour tomorrow afternoon? So the product of the purchaser's job is purchased and delivered ingredients. Hey, I got two bags of sugar for you. That's and could great. you uh, please sign right here? Now, to make the cupcakes, the baker's assistant first prepares and measures the ingredients and then mixes them together. So his product is cupcake batter, ready to be baked. The baker is then responsible for putting the cupcakes into the oven and taking them out when they're perfectly baked. The cupcakes then go to the decorator to be professionally decorated. Mind if I try one? Once done, it's the baker's job to make sure they meet the proper standard of quality. What do you think? It's good. The final product is high quality cupcakes that can be delivered to a place where they can be sold to happy, hungry customers. Hi. Now, knowing the exact steps and products you need to create your final product tells you how many different positions have to be filled. And as we've seen, a person can hold more than one position, as long as he or she knows what all his different positions are. Here you go. Thank you so much. But how can you make sure that each and every person involved understands what their product is, let alone what their position and status is within the structure of the organization? L. Ron Hubbard made an important breakthrough in the subject of organization. It's called the organizing board. It makes any activity, project, or group function more efficiently, and you're gonna learn precisely how to create one step by step. The organizing board enables you to see how things flow through an organization. It shows what functions are done, the order they are done in, and who is responsible for getting them done. Whether you're part of a large corporation or simply an individual with the dream, you can use this knowledge to expand your business Customers are gonna love it. Well, let's get them packed up and shipped out right away. Increase your productivity. Mr. Collins. How you doing? I'm doing good. It's good to see you. Thank you for your business, sir. Come again. Or simply organize any aspect of your life. Dad, I fed the dog. Can we go to the soccer team now? Honey, we're going to soccer practice. With these tools, any activity or group can not only become more efficient, it can be made to expand and flourish. With the Basics of Organizing course, you can learn the precise steps to create an organizing board for your activity. And 
there are many more practical exercises to help you get organized. Start the basics of organizing by going to Scientology.org slash tools. There is no fee or requested donation for the course. Coming up, tools you can use to achieve your personal and professional goals. We all have dreams and goals, but all too often, they don't amount to much more than that. Perhaps we work night and day to make our goals a reality. Hi guys, how are you? Only to discover we're no closer than we were when we started. Or maybe the road to get there seems so overwhelming, we have no idea where to even begin. Reports. And so, our most treasured dreams can become abandoned as lost causes. Too far out of reach to ever come true. But no one is happy without a goal. And no one can be happy without faith in his own ability to reach that goal. Well, the truth is, there is absolutely no goal, large or small, that can't be achieved. Whether it be for an individual, a group, or a business, the key to making any goal a reality is knowing precisely how to plan out what must be done to attain it. You see, there are actually a number of subjects that make up an activity. And when one or more of these subjects aren't aligned with the others, upsets occur, and projects become hindered or even fail. Had it with you. Each of these subjects must operate in a coordinated manner with one another to achieve success. In Scientology, there is a valuable tool called the Administrative Scale. It lists these subjects in order of their importance, and all of the subjects must be in agreement with each other. In other words, each subject must align with the rest. At the top of the scale in seniority is the goal. A goal is the known objective toward which all of these actions are directed. For example, a goal might be to become the most successful restaurant in the area, or to become an award-winning recording artist, or the premier surfboard manufacturer for professional surfers, and so on. All the other items on this scale must be aligned toward this goal. So you have to work this scale up and down, making sure each item is in agreement with the others. For example, in order to achieve your goal, you have to produce a product that has value. Therefore, you must name your valuable final product. For instance, a restaurant's valuable final product might be delicious cuisine served in a lively, comfortable atmosphere. For a musician, it might be well-executed performances that create an emotional impact. Or for a surfboard maker, high-quality surfboards that look better and outperform the competition. This is epic. Now, knowing your goal and your product is a great start. But what about all the subjects in between? Well, when you study this scale, you'll find out exactly what each item is and why they all have to agree with each other. For example, an ideal scene tells the group what the area ought to be like. Now, the people that are doing it so well are those guys in the city. So if you don't mind me treating you to lunch, we're going to go there and find out just what it is that they're doing right. Okay? So let's go. An ideal scene is what you compare your existing scene to. Hello. Hi. I know exactly where I'm going to put you. Awesome. Welcome to yours. It shows you what the scene is supposed to consist of. See guys, this is what I was talking about. The presentation is amazing, delivery was incredible, everything. It's just really open and airy. And if there is no ideal scene envisioned with which to compare the existing scene, you won't be able to recognize departures from it. I think this gives us lots of great ideas for us. Yeah. Yeah. Now, to bring your existing scene up to an ideal one, you will need a plan. A plan is a description of the short-range, broad intentions required to handle a specific area. For example, 
This restaurant owner's plan is to expand the business by upgrading the quality of the atmosphere, the service, and the food. Once you have a plan, you can derive the series of steps or actions necessary to accomplish it. Will that be all? <laughs> That's awesome. When you study the scale, you'll know exactly how to do that. Hey, so how's the new recipe going? It's going really, really well. I think it's really going to be amazing. Actually. And you know how to break down each step into specific targets that will keep you moving toward your objective. Oh, that is art. Then you can use statistics to chart your progress. The number of surfboards sold 20 times, and that's a result of your hard work. The administrative scale will show you precisely what you need to do, step by step, to achieve the happiness and prosperity you desire. A person is as alive as he has hopes and dreams. Without goals, hopes, or dreams, attaining pleasure is nearly impossible. Reopen! In fact, Happiness could be defined as the overcoming of obstacles toward a desirable goal. With the tools found in Scientology, any individual, group, or business can gain the knowledge required to overcome those obstacles and succeed in life. Your dreams can come true. Oh my God, I did it! In fact, with the tools of Scientology, they're well within your reach. Make your plans a reality with the Targets and Goals online course. Learn the skills to break down any activity into targets you can accomplish. Start Targets and Goals or any of our online courses by going to Scientology.org slash tools. No fee or donation is required. Coming up next, learn how to discover the real reasons behind success or failure. In life or in business. That's the third order this month. Things don't always go smoothly, to say the least. I don't understand. Why are we getting so many canceled orders? Perhaps our success falls short of our expectations. As y'all can see, sales are up. French fries. Or some area of our business isn't performing as well as the rest. Except the new jumbo burger. And it's sinking like a stone. Or a project isn't coming off as well as we hoped. Hey, Ann. You know, it's just, it's not sounding right out here. I, I don't know what the problem is. I'm gonna have to come in there. When things go wrong, we naturally want to find out why. Look, we have a lot of guitars stacking up in the warehouse. Did he say when he's planning on reordering? But without the know-how needed to conduct an accurate investigation, just adjusting that, see if that makes a difference, okay? All we're really left with are guesses, or mere explanations. Would uh, someone like to explain that to me? Well, clearly somebody's just made a mistake. The Jumbo Burger marketing campaign is a huge success. That's right. Must be a glitch in the computer program, boss. I'll get them to recount those numbers by hand and send them to you as soon as possible, sir. You do that, I'd like to see them. If our goals are not being achieved, or if we find ourselves in a situation that keeps getting worse, I have your recalculated numbers. Oh. There is a real, identifiable reason for this. They don't look any different than the last numbers. You see, things don't just happen. They are caused. There are reasons behind every situation. Reasons that people themselves can control. Here's an example. A guitar manufacturer is struggling. Business is bad, and he needs to track down the real reason. Call this the why. The right why, when found, will always open the door to handling the situation. Does anybody have any suggestions? Now, he may be offered all kinds of opinions and explanations as to why sales are down. It's obvious why. It's the internet and all these computer games. Like None of which would actually lead to a workable solution. So they don't want to take the time to learn how to play guitars anymore? This is a wrong why. What do you suggest we do? It doesn't open the door to improving the situation. Turn off the internet? Besides, the competition is doing just fine. 
The wrong why can cause you to correct things which are not wrong. Tilt this over here a little bit, get the sound baffle lined up, all right? And neglect things which are not right. Finding the right why requires skill in investigation. Investigation is the careful discovery and sorting of facts. And it involves the ability to think logically and get to the bottom of things. To get facts, you have to ask questions. Ask yourself, what don't I understand? Find something about the situation that doesn't make sense. Then, question the people in that area to get more data. Yep. Can I have a word? If one of their answers doesn't make sense or isn't logical. Quite frankly, the wood just isn't as good as it used to be. Thank you. Keep asking questions. Hey, Matt, can I speak to you? Oh, hey, boss. Sure. Sooner or later, the real reason, the right why, will show up. So now I'm having to go to a different supplier. Uh-huh. You have the best wood by far of anybody in the business. I said it, man. But you pay late or you don't pay at all. And it's the same month after month. Look, look, I would really like I'm to keep doing No payment, no wood. Uh, hello? In this case, an investigation revealed that the accountant had not been paying their suppliers in a timely manner. Three, two, one. Oh! Lower quality materials were then ordered from somewhere else, which made for lower quality guitars. The neck on your guitar, it's warped. This led to a bad reputation. Let me get you mine. Causing sales to slump and orders to be canceled. So now I'm having to go to a different supplier. I get it, thank you. Once the right why is found, the manufacturer will know exactly what to do to correct the situation. I'll see you later, man. Hey. Now, statistics can play an important role in investigations. There's always a reason behind a bad statistic. And it's sinking like a stone. Question those involved. Somebody like to explain that to me? You're looking for data that is illogical. Well, clearly somebody's just made a mistake. The Jumbo Burger marketing campaign is a huge success. For example, there's something illogical here. Because the marketing campaign couldn't be a huge success if the product's sales are sinking. Both datums can't be true. One of the breakthroughs in Scientology has been to identify the exact points that make something illogical. They're called out points. And the better you get at spotting them, the faster you can get to the bottom of any investigation. You're going to learn how to recognize all the different types of outpoints, so you can quickly identify what's illogical about any situation. You're also going to find out what plus points are and why they're equally important to the success of any endeavor. Looks just like the pictures, too. These are just part of an entire body of knowledge regarding the subject of investigation. For example, you'll also learn why it's important to know what your ideal scene really is. And how to know if your investigation has led you to the real why. Our sales are the highest they've ever been. Knowing how to investigate gives you the power to identify the real reasons behind success or failure in any aspect of life. Looks good. With this knowledge, any situation can be repaired and any goal can be attainable. Very nice. Is there some situation in your life you can improve if you found the right why? On the investigations course, you can learn practical exercises that help you apply these tools to your life. To start, go to Scientology.org slash tools. There is no fee or requested donation. How can you get agreement from others for your plans and ideas? That's next on Scientology Tools for Life. When we hear the phrase,